to mil spec or to not mil spec, to have an adjustable gas system or to not have an adjustable gas system, to cry tears of freedom while shooting suppressed or to shoot comfortably while shooting suppressed? Those are the questions we're gonna answer today. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here today to talk about adjustable gas blocks. Because, well, again, there's a lot of you all asking, what type of adjustable gas block am I running on my Mark 18? Since it's a short-barreled gun that I keep suppressed most of the time, I know you're running an adjustable gas block. I'm not. So that begs the question, do you need an adjustable gas block? And the short answer is no. No, no you don't. But do you want one? Absolutely. And well, here's why. When you guys see me shoot my Mark 18 with the suppressor on it, silencer, can on it, uh, you'll notice that there are a lot of escaping gases back towards the bolt carrier group. A lot of those gases are, well, coming right back into the shooter's face, which isn't always the most pleasurable experience, but you know, we just deal with it. Wear eye protection and hold your breath. But at the end of the day, could I make my life a little bit easier? Well, probably, if I did like what I did on the high-end build that we're gonna be giving away very soon. Uh, and also to make sure that you've caught up on all of the episodes with this, with our entire sponsorship from Stag and everybody, cause you know, that, that's coming to a close. And if you'd like to see another build series, let me know down in the comments. But all right, anyway, so, on this guy here, I did throw on a JP Enterprises adjustable gas block, and it's kind of a uh, nifty gas block because it actually isn't pinned in place or set screwed in place, I should say. It's uh, just clamped in place. It's kind of nifty. Uh, so you don't actually need to have your barrel dimpled, but the proof research barrel that is on this guy is dimpled. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we do have a whole episode on barrels and stuff like that as well, and if dimpling is necessary. I say it is. <laughs> Anyway, with that being said, an adjustable gas block, which is an obvious thing that you can see here on this PWS, right here just makes life a little bit easier for the shooter because you can actually control how many gases are coming back to cause the gun to function. If you have that Goldilocks amount of gas coming back, you're going to have a smooth and reliably cycling firearm, but you're also gonna have a light recoiling firearm and less gas coming back into the system, which is, well, adds to more reliability in a sense, because while well, you're not getting, in a DI gun at least, you're not getting so much of those dirty gases back into it. Okay, and of course a little bit lighter recoiling because it's not sending with a lot of force the bolt carrier group back into the buffer and stock system there, right? But the reason I say it kinda lends to a little bit more reliability is because if you just pump it full of gas, what's gonna happen is it's gonna cycle everything no matter what, but it's gonna be a little bit more violent, a little bit more vicious, and offer, I guess you could say, a uh, quicker parts wear than what's needed. So, an adjustable gas system, or an adjustable gas block, I do like, I do recommend. However, I bought my Mark 18 as a complete short barreled rifle, and through other methods, I really haven't found it necessary to switch the gas system out on it yet. The time is coming, however, because, well, I've got, I've got to be approaching about 7,000 some odd rounds through it now, and though it's not failing me, I am noticing that it's starting to hiccup a little bit more. I think I just need to start replacing some springs and stuff like that. And like I said, I do shoot it suppressed quite often, so yeah, doing that means more gases back into the system, which means, well, a higher rate of parts wear. It's just gonna happen, nature of the beast. Anyway, if you shoot your gun a lot, you might wanna run an adjustable gas system, which is something I might switch to. Simply because being able to adjust those gases, like I said, getting you into that sweet spot is great. If you adjust them too greatly, you're gonna get added parts wear. If you don't, if you've got too little gas coming into the system, it's not gonna cycle reliably. And it's not just for shooting suppressed either. You can get that sweet spot just for felt recoil. You can get that sweet spot for the type of ammunition you're gonna be running. Sometimes you might run a higher grain 
brain open tip match, right? Or you might just be running some cheap hole punching, you know, paper punching type rounds, and you might want to put a little bit more gas to it to make sure it cycles those cheaper rounds more effectively or efficiently or reliably. So at the end of the day, an adjustable gas block is quite simply something you can add to your system to make life a lot easier for you. And it doesn't have to be a super expensive system. Sure, are there reliability issues you might run into if you have a non-adjustable gas block versus an adjustable gas block? And would you like to spend a little bit more money on an adjustable gas block to make sure you're getting a quality one? Sure, but on one of my first AR builds, I threw on like a little $25 adjustable gas block that we carry here even, and it's been running just fine for me. Granted, it's not a gun I shoot every single day, but I shoot it fairly often, also suppressed, and it works very well. The type of gas block I'm talking about though is the one that takes a set screw, uh, kind of like what's on the JP Enterprises here. You have your actual gas adjustment screw and then it locks into place by utilizing another set screw that puts tension on the adjustment screw. So the issue there is you have the potential of that set screw bar backing out and well, now your adjustment screw is just kind of free floating in there and has the potential to back out as well. And now your gun is just losing all of its gas up front and not gonna cycle. And that's, that's not good. It shouldn't go the other way where it tightens it and completely closes off the gas, but you never know. So anyway, you could run into potential issues like that. I know uh, Superlative Arms, uh, Aero Precision, there's a couple of other manufacturers, Seekins also too. There's a couple of different manufacturers out there that are very recognized brand names uh, that make some of the best quality you know, AR parts and stuff like that out there that you could definitely trust. And if you're looking for probably some of the best bang for your buck, uh, you know, with quality and everything in mind, I really do like what Aero Precision has to offer. In a recent giveaway, uh, they included that adjustable gas block of theirs on that M5 giveaway, the uh, Veterans Day one. And it's pretty nifty because it actually doesn't utilize the set screws or anything else like I was talking about before, where you have that, that potential of those screws backing out but it utilizes just all of this self-contained unit and it works very well, I found, which is pretty cool. Now, outside of the DI world, you have the piston-driven guns like the Mark 111, which utilizes a long stroke piston-driven or long stroke piston uh, like you see in an AK, which there are adjustable gas pistons for AKs as well, like the KNS system, like what I have in my Meridian Defense Pestilence, which you all know is a very nice looking AK. But uh, anyway, and nice shooting AK. But anyway, on these guys here that are built in, just notice on the piston guns, these guys are a little bit bigger and beefier up here and you have different, and you can just take the tip of a bullet and rotate those, do whatever's necessary. Uh, but what's cool about these guys, you have a, you're playing with a little bit larger ports. So you don't have to worry about fouling as much on these as you do kind of like a DI gun because you have those escaping gases, all of that carbon that's escaping and a little bit finer ports that could get fouled up over a period of time. How many rounds would that take though? Good question. Maybe there's a test in our future. So as far as the reliability of like an adjustable gas block for a DI gun utilizing that set screw method, probably not going to be as reliable as a piston driven adjustable system. That's just natures of the beast here. Nature of the beasts, I guess we could say. But anyway, you also do have built-in adjustable gas blocks on other DI guns like the Nemo over here, which is a fantastic 308. And this one here you'll notice is also a big beefy system and comes all self-contained here, very accessible from the rail also. So Nemo did a excellent job on this rifle. This is the executive order. And I am a fan of this gun, it is sweet. But uh, anyway, so you have all these different options, all these different manufacturers coming together and building out uh, these adjustable systems to make sure that your gun is gonna be running smoothly, reliably, not so much gas back into the system, so it's gonna keep it a little bit cleaner as well. It's just very nice. And this one here is very obviously marked for quite simply suppressed and unsuppressed. Don't know how well that'll show up for you guys there, but you can kind of see that right through the top of the rail. So suppressed and unsuppressed. If you want to take that beefy break off of this guy, put a can on it, flip it over to suppressed. That means not a lot 
of gas, so it's going to be cutting down some of the gas that comes back into the system because you'll naturally be getting a little bit more anyway due to the back pressures that is being offered by that muffler at the end of your barrel, also known as a silencer or a can or a suppressor, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, so all these different options. So again, our adjustable gas blocks, absolutely necessary. I'll straighten it out later. Uh, no, but if you do want a, well, a little bit, I guess you could say easier shooting gun, something that won't recoil as much, you really want to fine tune everything, you absolutely can run an adjustable gas block and I encourage it because, well, especially if it's you installing it, that's getting you a little bit more uh, acclimated to your firearm and it's causing you to learn some more things, which when you think about these guns, they're, uh, they're a lot of fun. They are works of art in my mind and whenever you have these explosions taking place by your face and your face stays intact and everything works as it should, it's kind of a, a miracle almost. But anyway, very cool stuff. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment sections below. What do you, or comment section below, what do you think? Do you guys like to run adjustable gas blocks? Yes or no? Or what about a gun that utilizes two adjustable gas systems? Because it's super weird and also kind of obscured. Not a lot of people are talking about this gun and it's one that I think we should talk about a little bit more because it's pretty freaking nifty. It's the Diamondback DBX. The DBX is a 5.7 by 28 chambered dual gas piston design and it actually has two gas systems because it's a dual gas piston so you'll notice you, maybe you'll be able to see it but right up front here you can just take a flathead screwdriver and you, i think you have four different positions you can run this gun in so if you're running it suppressed running different types of 5.7 that exist it will run clean reliably and keep on running, running, running. Now, granted, if you if you put like one piston at, let's just say setting one and the other piston at setting four, you're probably gonna see some quick parts wear. I do believe it might still function, maybe, maybe not that big of a difference between the two settings, but it's gonna cause premature wear, so just don't do that. Make sure both pistons are on the same setting just throwing that out there but anyway talk about lightweight super slim and if you've got the brace you can throw a stock on it after you sbr it uh if you want to but anyway talk about a super slim design i think it only weighs like three pounds or something you know it takes the fn57 mags comes with a pro mag and it runs the pro mags very well but really really cool design so uh yeah check this guy out but anyway, all of that just to kind of talk about the adjustable gas system that's found on our current giveaway. The LWRC uh, ICA5, that the LWRC ICA5. Okay, there it is, I got it. This gun does also have an adjustable gas system on it, but unlike the PWS that, see, that you see right here, that's a long stroke piston driven system. This is a short stroke piston driven system. And if you guys are curious about what the differences are those, if you're newer to our channel, we've got videos covering all that and so much more. Just type in classicfirearms.com pistons and I'm sure something's going to come up for you or long stroke versus short stroke. Just make sure you're on YouTube whenever you type that in. Uh, but anyway, with that being said, you'll see that this guy right here does have an adjustable system. You can rotate that to whatever desired setting you want. And of course, again, utilizing that short stroke system. LWRCI makes some fantastic rifles. These things are sweet, are sweet. I said our like O-U-R, that was weird. Anyway. Uh, it comes with their cold hammer forged chrome lined fluted barrels, that twisted fluted barrel. I think that's just always very uh, identifiable of LR LWRCI. You've got your ambush flip up sights is what they're called. EOTech first focal plane one to six LPVO with the American Defense Manufacturing QD mount. Big fan of that. And the only other thing we added to that other than the optic and mount is the BCM vertical grip because well, ergonomics and comfort. But this is a fantastic rifle and I'm thankful for companies like LWRCI who brings us such quality works of art like these rifles. Hence why the code word is quite simply thanks and also too it was just 
you know, Thanksgiving. So happy belated Thanksgiving to everybody. Hopefully you all have something to be thankful for. If not, maybe you can be thankful for the new gun that's gonna be showing up in your safe. And to do that, well, just go to classicfirearms.com, hit that top banner, show you all the different ways to get your entries. And again, utilize that code word, thanks. Don't miss out. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you guys next time at classicfirearms.com.